Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. People are nervous about these three individuals. They think they're going to ruin their lives with this new documentary. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Jay Allen, Nikki Biles, and Uncle Luke. The documentary Freak Nick, The Wildest Party Never Told, streaming now on Hulu. Welcome. Thank Appreciate you, it. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you for That's good, good. Now, we, we've all seen the doc, and a lot of people who haven't were very nervous. <laughs> They thought they were going to see uh, older videos of Uncle Luke uh, throwing money on him. They thought they were going to see videos of themselves at Freak Nick's, you know, twerking on cars. They didn't call it twerking back then. It was booty shaking on cars. Yep. They weren't going to see that. But the doc is not really like that. It kind of explains the story of the origin, how it started, how it helped so many people, how it helped the land of music and, and all that. So break down the documentary and why you guys wanted to put this together. Yeah, we were a few years behind, you know, what the essence of Freak Nick was to be able to attend. Mm -hmm. So when Nikki and I created the original concept, you know, we, we knew we were missing the stories and that's when we went and found Uncle Luke and found Jermaine so that we could tell the story the right way. Mm -hmm. And essentially, as we were putting it together, everybody had a Freak Nick story. So what you see is a hybrid of everybody from the DC Metro Club mm -hmm. to you know the people that were at the end telling the story about how. Now, what y'all know about Freenik? Because y'all weren't that y'all weren't there, so y'all must have heard stories from uncles, aunties. What? Anybody coming back? Like you will wait for them to get back so you can see what happened. They coming back with the um, the the shirts with the big Looney Tune characters mm -hmm. and the Bart Simpsons and all of that, and the, the music, all mm -hmm. of that coming back, and you like, oh, I can't wait to go. Mm -hmm. Only for it to end before, <laughs> before, before you can get go. there. Yeah. This, this is interesting, though. I think about it, though. Jay and Nikki, y'all wanted to do the doc, but the, the, the OGs, like the Lukes, who not just were there, provided the soundtrack for it. Did y'all not want to tell the story, Luke, just because you like, you know what? Some things are best left unsaid. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some things are best left off the record. No, no. I mean, for me, you know, it's, it's always telling the stories, you know, because mm -hmm. my story has never been told, you know, and I looked at my whole career you know, my stories, you know, have not been documented, you know, for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, when I jumped on this, it was it was about, you know, uh, my whole life story. You know, I, I was I did a deal with a film company and I looked at the actual script that was written for my like, biopic. And then I was like, half of my stories ain't being told. So, mm. you know, I didn't enter into a deal with Swirl Films to be able to do these different parts of my life story. So when Jay and Nikki mentioned Freak Nick, and uh, I was like, that's another part of my life story that wouldn't have, have been in a long stripped uh, film. Mm -hmm. You know, and so be, be um, amongst that story and other stories, you know, so, you know, that, that I'm doing uh, for the next couple of years, you know, documenting those stories and putting them out. You know, this is just one mm -hmm. part of it. Could you ever do a proper anything about Uncle Luke in this era. Everybody's so sensitive. People want to cancel folks. Could you ever do that <laughs> properly? Because you would have to. You yeah. can only do it one way. Yeah, you could only do it one way. And that's why, like, like I have a, uh, I'm doing a biopic with uh, Will Packer and we negotiating with a couple different companies and, and the unique way of how we put that together, mm -hmm. you know, uh, kind of took the sensitivity out of it because yeah, you live in a different era, mm -hmm. you know, and and even with this right here, you know, Freak Nick is a large part of my story, you know, and you know, I put the freak in Freak Nick. And so, <laughs> you know, you had to do it in, in a unique way because if you did it, if, you, if we did this story uh, a certain type of way in this, life that we live in right now, we'll probably all be in jail. <laughs> That's a fact. Now, That's a fact. now did, did Uncle Luke uh, ruin Freak Nick and change the HBCU proper picnic of uh, what they were trying to do? They were trying to be the DC uh, people that couldn't afford to go home, were trying to create this brilliant and nice space. And, you know, the Greeks were stepping and there was barbecue and there was food. And then came... <laughs> Let me see you, th you know. And, and, and then we came. The fun guy, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The fun came. Exactly. What the hell you Facts. talking about? <laughs> I would say he enhanced it. I wouldn't enhanced say he it. ruined it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think Atlanta wasn't ready for that? Obviously. I, I mean, it, I'm not gonna say it wasn't ready. It just didn't know it was ready, because mm -hmm. that him coming there and wilding out and all of that made other people come there, made other acts come there, and then that's where the music came from, and the South got something to say, and all of that. And it, I mean. Uncle Luke. And Luke, so, what, what made you want to go to Freaknik? Like, was it the buzzing at the time? Because it was small at first. 
and then you took it to another level. Well, I mean, you know, you having a party in Atlanta, <laughs> and it's called Freak Nick. I got to be the ambassador. <laughs> That's right. Facts. So I mean, so I mean, basically, you know, this was at the time when I went. It was the height of my career, our career, mm -hmm. uh, the controversy, going to jail, doing all these different things, you know. And then I hear about this little party going on in Atlanta called Freak Nick. So then when I heard it, I thought it was a, a, a freak party. Mm -hmm. You know, real talk. I'm like, <laughs> I need to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the king of freakiness. I got to go show my face in this joint. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And then at the end of the day, you know, we went there and did that. Plus some shot videos and all these different things. And come to find out later on down the line, it was like, no, no, no. It wasn't no, <laughs> it wasn't that type of party. Yeah. It was yeah. some people out there with little TPs and their little... <laughs> You know, candles and all that. They were trying to have a little Greek thing, and before you know it, I, you know, I put the freak in, in the picnic. Mm -hmm. So, what was the difference between freak Nick and the classic in Florida? The classic was was wild too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the well, I mean, you you had different you had different degrees of, of it all, I, and I lived through them through, through them all. You had Myrtle Beach, yes, sir, Black Black Weekend. Yeah. You, yeah, same yes, situation. Sir. You had Myrtle Beach, then you had. Daytona Beach, mm -hmm. you know, you then you from Daytona Beach, you had Carabana in mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in Canada, so you had different uh, versions of these different parties, mm -hmm. you know, that was generated through young people. And then you had Galveston, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. Beach Week, the bike, uh, what it was, it was it was some sort of Beach Week mm -hmm. out there that we would go frequent. Philly Greek, mm -hmm. yeah, Philly, Philly, yeah, Philly. yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, doing that. Doing that party, watching people run by my hotel naked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you had all those type of parties, and and uh, you know, and Freak Nick was just one that you had to go to. During that time, did you ever get the money you were supposed to get? Because I'm I'm thinking about it now. When Uncle Luke pulled up, it wasn't like a regular rapper where he could just perform with a DJ. Man, Luke Uncle was Luke had a tour bus. <laughs> Uncle Luke you, had with the girls women. on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you had a lot of people Please. to pay. So did yeah. you actually get what you was supposed? Because you you had. A MC Hammer type staff, like you had mm -hmm. mad people. No, no, I'm not an MC Hammer type staff. I <laughs> no. mean, Hammer, Hammer had a whole 727. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Japan and I'm like, man, you got all these people in here? Wardrobe and all that stuff, like how you pay them? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, my, my crew was a big old, I mean, it was mostly girls. It was girls and DJs and, you know, we ain't had too many securities. It was, it was new artists like Pitbull would mm -hmm. be on the bus. You know, uh, Trick Daddy would be on the bus. You know, guys that I was breaking along the way, you know, using my popularity to uh, spin them off to mm -hmm. hopefully have them become uh, hit artists. Mm -hmm. could, could you tell me what was the Miami influence on Atlanta sound? Because Atlanta was known for its bass too. But I, I, there's always, you know, a, a, a little debate about who came first. No, we came first. Yeah. No question about <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I started hip hop in the South. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, no question about it. Yeah. I mean, it was no hip hop. And it was no hip hop, nowhere in the South. When I basically started, we was touring those areas. We went to Atlanta, they they were playing, uh, they had New York DJs on the radio. Mm -hmm. So they didn't, even, they didn't even play any music. I mean, I signed an uh, artist out of Atlanta called MC Shadi. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I would go to Sharon Showcase. They had, you know, they had some rappers up in Atlanta, you mm -hmm. know, Kizzy Rock. They had a, a few dudes doing some underground stuff, but they really wasn't, you know, nobody, you know, picked them up. Nobody was nobody signed them, and so I would go there all the time. You know, and and pretty much do shows at Sharon Showcase, mm -hmm. the hot spot there, the little underground spot. You know, and uh, and you know, once we went in there, we signed him. He was one of the top rappers in town, and then you know, kid blew up, mm -hmm. and then we just kept on moving around. Like even even in uh, New Orleans, we signed a guy named Bust Down. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a big hit. You know, I always. You know, I had these conversations with uh every time I see Birdman, he tell me the story that he tried to get bust down and then link him up with me to then get him a deal. I say, Well, it all worked out mm -hmm. right for you, you know what I'm saying? But uh no, it was it was it was no hip hop, period. Mm -hmm. You know, and even when we did shows with with New York artists like Rock him mm -hmm. and all them, they gave us five minutes on stage, then we would eventually end up in a fight, uh or uh, run DMC another five minutes and and almost end up in a fight with mm -hmm. their management and all that because we, you know, we were the only thing. So it was like really breaking ground in mm -hmm. an area 
uh, that that it was unheard of. That makes so much sense. I, I didn't know that because everybody always credits Shadi as being a pioneer for Atlanta bass, mm -hmm. but you, you signed him. Yeah, I signed him. I didn't him. know that. that yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. And he, and, and he eventually became a pioneer because he was the first one to break out. Were mm -hmm. you mad at, at JD back then? When he kind of you were doing what you were doing, and then he did the the bass all stars, mm. which was very similar to what you were doing. Were you mad at him back then at all? No, no, no. Uh, because you know, I know the story. I knew the story of Lil John. Mm -hmm. You know, working at at uh, So So Def mm -hmm. and Lil John wanting to do bass. You know, uh, and when Lil John got, mm -hmm. you know, when he got his opportunity, you know, to show JD that he was, you know, he was a producer. Mm -hmm. You know. He did this version of bass, which is, we called it R&B bass, you know, with the Mabu and all that. Mm -hmm. yep. He put a little twist to it uh, instead of trying to do it the same way we were doing it. So, you know, I I loved it. I respect it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my thing is, the more the merrier for everybody. Gotcha. And if you diversify anything, then the stand power becomes longer. Now, how did y'all get all the footage? Because <laughs> that was when yes. you had big ass camcorders on you. There was nah. no cell phone footage. How did y'all get all that footage? Um, well, some people that we interviewed actually had their own footage, and then so when we saw that it wasn't enough, um, I put up a post and was like, "Give us all of your footage." Um, before we put it out, yeah. 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 Right, right. Yeah. so it started coming in, and it was it was footage from there. It was footage from I literally went to people's houses who had active DVD. I mean, um, what you call them? VCRs. Yeah, yes, VCRs. active VCRs yeah. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, went to their house and and got that met, met people in the in the parking lots. Yeah. However, we could get the footage. I was getting it. Was right. there any celebrities wilding out back then? Because everybody was wilding out back then. Absolutely. Like, let's take that one out because you know, <laughs> did you have to take anything out? But like, we're not gonna put that up. <laughs> not for any celebrities. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. but you had to take something out. Oh yeah. No, nah, we definitely took footage out. Why? Well, well, because again, I think when people saw this, the announcement, they thought this was some salacious documentary that was being made. But just like Woodstock documentary mm -hmm. was made and those stories were, being, were able to be told, just like we go see, you know, what happens at Mardi Gras. Like, black stories deserve the, the space to be told in a way where it's not a gotcha thing. Well, so, black people gotta stop trying to get motherfuckers. We be the main ones on social media ready to get each other. Well, yeah. nah, for yeah. real. But, yeah. but even when we put out the announcement, people were like, I hope they don't show this picture of me. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people <laughs> people presented it in that way. And we, we feel like Freak Nick, which is why we have these legends, JD, Luke. We feel like Freak Nick is a, a story in black history that deserves to be told because it wasn't just, you know, twerking on peace tree. You know, outcasts, these these major groups were formed during this time. Mm -hmm. Like these major executives like Shanti Das, mm -hmm. you know, and KP, like all these people came out of this ecosystem. And so we want to make sure we told the full story of Freak Nick, not just you can't you can't feel ninety minutes of just twerking on Peachtree. You know Man, the saying? funniest part about this is Uncle Luke just be having a little smile on his face the whole time, like he just reminiscing about it. Like, <laughs> you already know this is the one we had to cut right here because He's I do fine. have all the footage of the celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting head in the back of the bus. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! How important, important was Freenick to your career, Luke? Uh, it, it was it was very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, going to Atlanta in in the 90s, in the early 90s, when I heard about the actual, you know, heard about the party and then going there, we did videos there, we marketed uh, new artists there, uh, but at the same time, you know, I was right there when it kind of went bad, mm -hmm. you know, and then trying to work with, you know, city officials and trying to straighten it out and clean it up, working with different promoters and all that. So I was like really in the thick of things uh, when it, when it, when it kind of went bad and mm -hmm. then tried to actually save it. But then, you know, like you see in the doc, you couldn't save something that the Olymp when the Olympics was coming, mm -hmm. you know, that was too big mm -hmm. uh, for everything. But, but uh, it, it was, it was real important, you know, uh, especially, you know, the couple, I, I remember one video I did, I think it was bouncing the beat and we rented <laughs> the whole Nico hotel and yeah. had helicopters flying and had girls over the balcony and all that, and you know that became a big, a big song for me. Did you ever try to move it? Like when they, when they, when they was talking about canceling, you was like, man, let's bring it to Miami. Well, it, it was all similar. Okay. I mean, because we remember we started uh, Cancun, we started doing the parties on Memorial Day weekend in Cancun, mm -hmm. and all the celebrities would come down there, and then we move it to South Beach, and then same situation right now that you got going on that happened with Freak Nick. Mm -hmm. uh, Thought about it, but it was it was it was hard. I mean, mm -hmm. because 
you know, Atlanta, and just like uh, Jay say, it became a monster because everybody started using it as a promotional tool. You know, it wasn't just Atlanta going to Freaknik now. It was the world coming to Freaknik. It mm -hmm. was everybody from Detroit and every black college on that spring break weekend, and that's mm -hmm. where the gridlock uh, happened because the city just couldn't hold that many people uh, coming to uh, Atlanta like that. They tried to do it a couple of years ago, right? It, yeah. it didn't work out. Could Freaknik ever happen again? Oh, that's that's tough. Too because, many phones. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't <laughs> yeah, think Free Nick could happen, and we everybody has a different opinion. I don't think Free Nick could happen the way it did back then. I just think that's impossible. No major metropolitan city is gonna let you shut them down like that. But one of our other EPs on the project was Twenty One Savage, mm -hmm. and what I love that Savage did, he threw the party with um, Hannah Kane. Hannah Kane. Hannah Kane. Hannah Kane. Hannah, Hannah. Who is a monster out here? Mm -hmm. um, but what he did was a Free Nick theme party, and when you went to that party, which he graciously allowed us to attend, um, it felt like Freaknik. He had Uncle Luke on stage, Drake was there, you know what I'm saying? Like, it felt like in the 90s, he had a car club with the 90s cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was- Yeah, Play Poncho, Kizzy. He had like the artists that were back then doing it mm -hmm. on stage. Well, yeah. yeah, I think you, I, I really think it can, it can come back and it can come back in a positive way because when you really look at the story, you see how it started with, you know, some some uh, HBCU uh, grads and and they created something because they couldn't afford it. And still to this day, kids can't afford to go mm -hmm. go go to Dustin. I go to Panama City or South Beach, you know. And uh, I, I just think in, in an organized way because everything is programmed. You know, if you program something, it don't get chaotic. If mm -hmm. Freaknik was programmed, it wouldn't have got chaotic. It would have been similar to the Essence Festival. Right, right now, we all would be you know, talking about how it started and how great it is, you know, but again, it just, it takes uh, programming and organization uh, to, to do something like that. And I think you could kind of bring it back and, and be able to give a large portion of the money to HBCUs mm -hmm. and things like that. Do it in a positive way. I'm a firm believer of taking something that was so negative and then creating a positive out of it. And if you could do that, you know, it'll be a good thing. I always, don't want woke Nick, though. <laughs> you can't, you want woke Nick? No, I don't want no woke Nick. But I Would do. You, you want the girls sitting on your face? Oh, no, I'm married. But I want some young uh, young man to experience that. <laughs> I want some young man to experience that. Well, just send, that. send him out on the weekend with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like what you said, because I never thought about it. Freak Nick didn't have no programming. It was just everybody was just out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. that's what they do. Yeah, that's yeah. what they do when, when they want to shut something down for young African-American mm -hmm. kids, no different than what's going on on Miami Beach right now. You know, uh, they'll take it. And and, and when they want to gentrify a neighborhood, they let crime, 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 throw it on TV. Crime is bad. It's all this. Mm -hmm. You know, and let it just go real bad to, so the general public can be behind what they're getting ready to really do. Which is shut something down, mm -hmm. or, uh, or or go and take over a neighborhood. That's how you feel about South Beach canceling. Oh Bridge yeah, God, it's, South Beach got one of the most racist governments uh, ever to mankind, and, that, mm. and it's they have a blueprint uh, for whatever council come in and whatever mayor comes in. A uh, uh, spring break and Memorial Day weekend, you know, I always tell people just don't go there. Don't go spend your money there. Mm -hmm. It always bothered me because when you see the, the the white schools and the white people do their spring break, right? Yeah, they got crime. They drinking and driving. Mm -hmm. They're public intoxication. They're fighting and all that. Nudity. But it kind of gets swept under the under the rug. They don't have a problem. Yeah. You know? But when it's us, they shut it down. Like and they go mm -hmm. hard. Like like you said, spring break in Miami where they said two hundred thirty people got arrested. Those are college kids. How are they gonna pay to get out? <laughs> exactly. For, Absolutely. For being drunk, like that was what spring break was about. You walk what, around with your red cup and have a good yep. time. And what people don't realize is you have a white spring break mm -hmm. where white colleges go all at the same time and then later later in 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 the springtime you have all the black colleges that have spring break at the same time yep. so they know you know they know the 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 schedules of these different colleges and like right now is black college spring break around the world because all of the black colleges kind of do they do their spring break the same time mm -hmm. and so that's why you have it like that. Yeah, and the same yeah. thing as Carolina Brethren deal with in Myrtle Beach. The same, same thing. thing happens. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a they black, black bike weekend. Yep. And a, like, I don't, it's not white bike weekend, but it's, <laughs> but it's bike it weekend. Is, it was like two weeks ago, it was, like, was kind of like white bike weekend. But yeah. they just called it as bike week. And bike the week. second one yeah. was called black bike week. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, completely different and shut down. So. Did you hear Earthquake when he was up here, uh, Luke, and he said that he, he dropped a nuclear missile? 
He was yeah, in the military. <laughs> you can't miss y'all show. <laughs> I mean, I, when, he, when he told me, when, when I heard that story right here on y'all show, it's like, I'm like, oh, Lord, this man here, this man finna blame me for a nuclear disaster. That's my dog too quick. I mean, I, that, hey, but that, that, was, that was funny there. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you still feel like hip hop forgot about Florida when it came oh, to no all these hip hop fifty it. celebrations? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no question about it. I mean, we it, it was we had to go. You know, me and Trick Daddy, we had to actually go on social media and say, "Hey, you forgot about us? What the mm-hmm. fuck is going on yeah. here? We're mm-hmm. part of this. We're a major part of this." And then people start calling up and like, "Oh, we're sorry. Oh, we want to <laughs> have invite you. We want you to be a part that's of this crazy. and yeah, everything crazy. like that." So I mean, that that's that's been happening my entire career, and that's. That's why, um, you know, before I was mad, but like right now, being able to tell all these stories mm-hmm. in different forms, the Freak Nick, uh, Coach Luke, uh, this other show that we partnered up with, LeBron, that we get ready to do on, uh, you know, uh, scripted series. Uh, what is that? Is that gonna be the Book of Luke? Oh, uh, that's gonna be probably the dark side of Luke. Okay. Yeah, and so, and, and give you a real story of Miami, and you know, between that and the and the and the movie that we're doing with Will Packer, and then the other uh, the other show uh, with me coaching that we're doing with Smack and Strahan and all mm-hmm. them. So you'll see all these different pieces of be, being able to tell these different stories, which I'm I'm happy right now. So I pretty much created a damn film company out of the whole <laughs> thing because they didn't tell the story, and then I'll get to tell my own story. But you're a hip hop re- pioneer. Uncle Luke, I, that, that's what pisses me off yeah. when people have these conversations about hip hop pioneers and hip hop mm-hmm. moguls. You one of the original ones. We don't get down south hip hop without Uncle Luke. I don't think they realize what he sacrificed and, and, and what yeah. he went through. Ain't no parental, parental advisory stickers like, on albums. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they right. understand. Like you that. fought the government for hip hop. Got arrested and for it. <laughs> had to pay lawyer fees. And got yeah. locked up. Got locked up. Like he fought for hip hop, man. And they left Not him. And they left him out there to fight by himself. Like he was literally fighting. Yeah, I mean, and and. Just like you say, man, they, nobody came to my defense. Yeah. There wasn't no, nobody in the industry. Matter of fact, uh, people in the industry was talking shit about me. I mean, they would go on Donnie Simpson show other rappers and be like, oh, that's not hip hop. You know, it got to the point where when we did shows with uh, hip hop artists that they would say, oh, put them on last. And then they would all leave. Cause you know how you do a show, yeah. everybody on the side seeing who rocked the stage yeah. and shit. So we, we, we had to go through a lot. You know, people, but then people start understanding. And that's why, yeah. you know, I was happy that we put Savage a part of this because when mm-hmm. he looked at, you know, you know, this young kid is trying to understand, you know, this what went on, you know, this part of history, you know, and and people like ASAP Rocky, when I have sit down conversation with him, you know, man, I, I just embrace the history. So you got some artists that go deep into it, and then they be just wanting to vibe and like know where this shit came from. But then you got a lot of people that really try to brush it up under the rug. But, you know, this DACA, it, this DACA be the beginning of something big, I think, because this is the only, this is the only description of the South, you know, mm-hmm. on this level. You mm-hmm. you don't have nothing that ever been done on the South. And I think a large part of it they didn't want to tell the story because then a lot of people had to give me too much credit. <laughs> you feel me? And so, you know, when you do that, then it'd be like, okay, who the fuck was a part of this and not telling these stories? I think because uh, so much of the media was in New York back then. Mm-hmm. So that's who they documented, as opposed to the Lukes, the Jermaine Dupri's, the Jay Prince's, the Master P's. Like, it wasn't until maybe early 2000s 2000. when you yeah. started seeing, mm-hmm. like, the South mm-hmm. really get its props. And, I, and honestly, probably because of cash money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. yeah. Yeah. You couldn't deny them. Their numbers was too crazy. Their yeah. numbers was crazy. Yeah. I mean, and, and just like you say, they were, you know, uh, when you, see, I was never affiliated with a major label. Only one time I was affiliated with with uh, with, with, with Atlantic Records, and that kind of went bad because uh, Sylvia Rohn never embraced uh, me, you know, uh, and what we were doing as far as the label, and then we kind of jumped off of that real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but at the same time, so everybody got that big machine behind them. You know, I never had a big machine, which I was happy, you know, at the time because I got all the money. You feel me? I, you know, shit, I we pressed the records and manufactured them and sent them out, and we pretty much got all the money off of the records, and everybody kind of lived good. But at the end of the day, you know, that's why it leads all the way up, up to now that I can really tell them stories, you know, because a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know my, I, I had the first download record ever in the history. 
when you look up the history books, uh, which uh, banned in the USA, and when I came up with the idea of letting every radio station play it on the 4th of July at the same mm. time, and then, mm. you know, that's when I was with Atlantic, and they downloaded this shit. I was like, how you mean download? You know, and I never even knew that existed. Mm. So it's a lot of different things, wow. you know, that people don't know uh, that, you know, through these projects that I'm, that I'm doing that they'll get the story. Why you think they, they, they tried gotta to go too? They gotta go. They I gotta, gotta I, go. I, I, I need two more quick questions. Why you think they tried to ban <laughs> what you was doing when literally all you was doing was making people dance, making people have sex, but you have all <laughs> these artists who killing people on records, selling drugs on records. I don't see nobody trying to ban them. Why did they try to ban you? Well, I mean, the, the thing is, I I was I was the first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We was the first to cuss on the records. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, but it was really it was really fun because we say. I looked at what everybody was doing everywhere else, what, what they was doing in Cali, what they was doing in New York, and you know, I was like, okay, we ain't gonna sam sample Jane Brown, we can't be like somebody else, we gotta be like where we from. A lot of people don't understand Miami is half naked, people mm -hmm. walking around everywhere, you know, strip clubs is naked. So so when 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 it came out to us, it was because, you know, for a couple of reasons. One, the album covers, you know, they, <laughs> you know, they were exotic. Mm -hmm. Then the, the back of the album cover, the titles were, you know, face down the ass up, hey, mm -hmm. who wants a pussy and all that. I do that because I had no money, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I had no budget, you know? And so at the end of the day, when you looked at the music and when you, when you listened to it, uh, then it started crossing over into white households. Mm -hmm. And that became, then I became a target. Same time, you had the music industry, same way. You know, the music industry was against what I was doing because I was taking sales away from everybody else. You know, and then when you take sales away, then it's like, okay, we gotta shut this motherfucker down. Mm. So then they send Tipper Gore, uh, Al Gore's wife after me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and put me on this list. You know, they they tell George Lucas, because at the time my name was Luke Skywalker Records, you gotta sue this motherfucker. So they was pulling me from wow. all different angles. You know, I had to pay That's him crazy. a big ass settlement. You had to uh, settle with George Lucas? Yeah, I had That's a big crazy. ass lawsuit with this motherfucker. Damn. That's why I don't look at no Star Wars right now. <laughs> Jesus, I, for Luke Records? For Luke, Luke, for Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, Skywalker Records. Yeah. I, I did, he sued me and and uh, I had to pay a goddamn- uh, What was the I, amount back then? You can tell us now, right or now. It was a half a million dollars. Dang. You know, uh, back crazy. then, you know, and I kinda, you know, when I saw Kenny Skywalker, okay, Luke Skywalker. You mm -hmm. know, and this, <laughs> he sued this motherfucker. So I had a whole bunch of shit that I was going through at the time and again, you know, a lot of people think that it was one case. It was actually three cases. It was mm. one, the Roy Orbison case uh, that went to the Supreme Court. I won that. Uh, if I don't win that, you don't, be, you know, there's no more satire. There's no more mm. Saturday Night Live or none of that shit. You can't, you know, uh, make a joke about it. Somebody then, it had the- uh, Oh, so, so satire, that was a satire case. That was a satire. Mm -hmm. That didn't just change music, that changed TV. And the, the internet. And the internet, yeah. and, and the internet, cause right now they use my case of uh, for any internet claim, whether it's you know, uh, you know, uh, intellectual property, it became mm -hmm. an intellectual property uh, satire case. And so when you had that shit going on, you know, now I got, you know, I'm, I'm fighting this. Uh, I got to go get this this ruling uh, overturned that the record is deemed obscene by this federal judge. And then I then say fuck him. And we go down the street and perform, and then go to jail for it. So I got three cases going on at one time. Crazy. Plus, you know, Jeez. plus all the other shit happening around me trying to run a record company and all that. And that's why, that's why, you know, I got really, really, really deep into into the politics of it all, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and seeing where it was coming from. How much did you spend in lawyer fees back then? <laughs> oh, shit, millions of dollars. But then the crazy yeah. part, I, I ain't had to do it. I wasn't going to jail. You know, I, I knew the big picture. And the big picture, it was really, it was coming out to hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, and they was coming out to me. Yeah, I was a part in the game because I was a low hanging fruit. I'm mm -hmm. not affiliated with a major label because I'm sitting there like motherfucking Andrew Dice Clay saying worse shit than me yeah. on the record. But he's on this label here. So you start putting two and two together and all that. And before you know it, you know, you see how that shit is played That's out. That's crazy because you, you, you said you, you, you fought, you did this really to fight for hip hop for the next artist. But the artists didn't support you at all. All the hip hop artists basically said "fuck you," but you still knew the bigger picture. Yeah, I looked. I looked at it from the bigger picture standpoint because I know, all right, these motherfuckers are stupid right now. You know, the industry is is not supporting me. 
you know, I remember going to the Grammys and, and it was like, yeah, we want you to go to the Grammys and everything and we're gonna celebrate your fight for free speech and all this shit. And I go there and I sit down on the third row and they man start having this big speech about, you know, artists are being attacked and we're fighting, you know, we're supporting and all this and everything, you know, our artists for free expression and everything. And right now we wanna honor a person who's out there on the road doing it every night. Madonna. No. <laughs> no. Madonna. Yes. I ain't never went back to the fucking Grammys. Said. <laughs> that is hilarious. Dude, was, a, dude was the last time when, you know, uh, Celebration of the 50, mm-hmm. I went back there. They said that shit, I was like, I don't know, walked up in there with my shit on, they taking the pictures and all that. Yeah, that's hilarious. No, that, that, it was crazy, man. But but again, that that's why I got so deep mm-hmm. in, into fucking politics, man, mm-hmm. because I know everything is political. I'd love to see that genre of bass music come back. There's a couple of artists that's mm-hmm. that's doing it a little bit, and I saw that you was in the studio with uh, Carisha. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She she's bringing it back. She's bringing it back. I okay. mean, the song that that we did together. I mean, you know, because I don't go in the studio for no fucking body. Mm-hmm. I mean, people call me all the time. You know, go and sample the shit. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, only two people could get me in there. Missy, I went in there with her mm-hmm. uh, before COVID, and then with Carisha. You mm-hmm. know, and uh, I, you know, I heard the track and I was like, okay, I can fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? And we went in there, knocked it out real, real easy. I think it's gonna be a a, a big summer club banger and everything. I, and I'm looking forward to people listening to it. All right, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you check out Freak Nick, the wildest party never told. It's Uncle Luke, Hulu now. They should build a statue of Uncle Luke in every major hip hop city. They man. should. Damn, they I'm they not should. even joking. New York, L. A., Atlanta. Take the motherfucker down. <laughs> do I get to have Do I get to have my genitals hanging? No, man. Like that statue, you know where the yeah, yeah, like the Greek, little Greek statue. <laughs> Jay Allen, Nikki Biles, Uncle Luke. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.